Enlarged spleen, gang. Leave a like if you have an enlarged spleen. Oh. As you guys can see, I'm getting into the holiday spirit with my Wolverine tank top. This lighting is really accentuating my acne scars. What up, Crab Ragoons? Uh, Den Den Boo MX here. I think it's finally time we uh, do this Q&A and figure out who's getting uh, this gaggle ass of Bala songs that I'm giving away. But, uh, but we're doing the Q&A first. A lot of entries, a lot of questions that I have to go through. The good thing is that a lot of people kind of asked pretty much the same question. So uh, even if I don't directly ask your question, you may still get an answer to your question because someone else probably asked something similar. But there were definitely like three questions that a lot of people pretty much asked. Yeah, I'd say the most common question that got asked is what's your dream ballad song, what's your dream BMX bike, and what's your dream guitar? So I'll answer that one first. So my top three favorite ballad songs that I own, uh, not in any specific order, Machine Wise Opus, uh, Acid Work Zyzix, and uh, Bondage Night stitch. I'm just kidding. It's bandage knives. Yeah, I'd say those are the top three that I own. Uh, close runner-ups would be my BB Superfly. I love this thing. And then my BRS V1 rep, but that's mostly because of the sentimental value it has for me. This ballad song turns 10 years old in November, and I will be making a video about it, so uh, stay tuned for that if you want some replicant content. I don't know if that's like the craze these days, but dream ballad song outside of those would probably just be an Orca. I feel like you guys already knew that. <laughs> I could go for like a crispy V1 Orca with the like wave pattern in the blade that's anodized blue that would and then for BMX bikes I don't necessarily have a dream BMX bike but there's definitely been bikes that I've been more comfortable on and that I feel like I've rode better on I know a lot of the kids these days really like them short stumpy super responsive frames but I have never felt that comfortable on them I've always preferred like a bigger sized frame and then a uh, dream guitar uh, let's say if like ESP or Gibson approached me and was like hey we'll make you literally whatever you want, I would do some dumb shit. <laughs> I'd get like an aged white Murphy Lab Les Paul Custom that's like a 30 inch baritone. Or I'd get like a 27 inch baritone seven string Les Paul Standard with an Evertune on it. I'd, I'd do something stupid. There's so many guitars that I could say are like a dream guitar. Those three questions were probably the most common one that I got. Uh, the second most common, what am I doing for my weight loss exactly? And like what keeps me motivated for weight loss? Uh, there's no like quick fix. There's no like easy trick. You just got to teach yourself to eat healthier and it just helps to exercise. Like exercising feels good. I'm not going to lie. There are some days where I dread working out. It's like the last thing I want to do. But after I work out, I always feel better. Someone asked what my favorite workout is, hands down it's curls. Just because there's so many different curls that you can do. Like you can do standard curls, you can do hammer curls, you can do like the reverse curls that suck. It's, curls are the best man. They're my favorite workout. But anyway, who's there? The third most common question I got was revolving around my tattoos. I gotta bust out this phone and I guarantee you it's gonna be like, oh we lost the connection. Oh yep, see, device disconnected because it's a piece of sh So the first tattoo I ever got was this cross right here and it is the only tattoo that I regret getting because <laughs> I don't fuck with organized religion anymore and uh it's just not a great tattoo <laughs> and the dick who did the tattoo it was literally just like the shittiest outline you can imagine and then it was just shaded in like barely and then like a year later my cousin saved it by like filling in all the black and then she did this tattoo as well but in between doing this tattoo and this tattoo her tattoo gun broke so we had to go buy her a new tattoo gun that was actually really janky and then the same place we bought some ink that ended up being counterfeit ink which is why this green never really stuck to my body that well but anyway this is the uh, second tattoo I ever got. It's the uh, cancer ribbon for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma because that's what my grandma had. I'm not going to change this one. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm not going to do anything with it. I will get this one covered up if I can find an artist that thinks it can be covered up. And then let's talk about Miss Blair right here. I got her done by a man named Erickson. But yeah, it's Blair from Soul Eater. As you can see the little Soul Eater moons right there. And I like knew I wanted a tattoo of her for a long time. And my family, my friends, my teachers, like everybody I brought it up to was like, you should think more about getting a tattoo of a cartoon woman. And then I got it and it's literally the one part of my body that has gotten nonstop compliments since I got it. Let me put it this way. I never really received compliments until I got this tattoo. Uh, next tattoo is the hidden one. Yeah, this is the one tattoo that uh, no one ever gets to see. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes a lot of people are like, what is that? But uh, you can see right here, this is a hammerhead. Uh, this one's name is Hamantha. And there's another little hammerhead down here. Her name is Finifer. And uh, this tattoo was done by Mr. Mark Longnecker, who was a guy who competed on Ink Master. And Ink Master was my mom and I's show back then. And every single Tuesday, I was like, I ain't doing shit. I ain't going to 
ride. I ain't gonna hang out with my friends. Tuesday was for me and my mom watching Ink Master. But yeah, one day my mom messaged me and she was like, holy shit, he's here. Why don't you DM him and see if you can get a tattoo by him? And we both ended up getting tattooed by him. I hope he's doing okay down there in Florida. And then my last and most recent tattoo is Miss Mutical right here on my forearm. I got this girl back in June when I went to Blade Show. I followed Russell for like five years. And then this year I finally decided I was going to Blade Show. And my roommate was the one who actually connected the dots. It was like, hey, isn't that Russell guy you follow in Georgia? Why don't you see if you can get tattooed by him when you're in Georgia? And I was like, so I did, and luckily he had an opening on that very last day of Blade Show, and I went and got this done, and I, oh man, it might be my new favorite tattoo. And then a couple people were also like, why do you only have tattoos on your left side? I have all my tattoos on my left side, and my lip piercing on my left side, because I'm right side dominant for like literally everything. But yeah, since I'm like right side dominant on everything, I figured I'd make my left side the cool looking side of me. <laughs> Super autistic. And yeah, I'd say those were like the top three, this thing fucking disconnected again, it's so shitty. Let's go on to some uh, individual questions here. So uh, Jacob G3372 asked, do you regret posting any videos or what you said in them? Yeah, I think I've scrapped most of them. Like, especially a lot of like our early writing videos. The reason those aren't uploaded is because there's so many of them and I don't know what we said in them. It's not even funny how offensive me and my friends used to be. And some of them are still trying to be like that today and I don't think they've realized that's kind of why I don't hang out with them anymore because I don't fuck with that anymore. Like that's, I grew up, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I stopped finding like slurs and shit like that funny when like I learned how to be empathetic. I, I don't know, my frontal lobe finished developing. That's a good question because it's doing a lot of like self-reflecting. I, I was like a real piece of shit, like not even that long ago. So basically if you're not a straight white man, I'm sorry about what I used to say about you. It's kind of crazy that like even at Blade Show, there were so many people that were like around my age that were just ripping off slurs. And I'm like, what are you, like how? Like how have you not evolved yet? You know, I don't know. Well, that made the mood weird. Uh, Jacob also asked, how much money have you spent on all your collections? Dude, I don't know, too much. That's just, that's gonna be the answer answer for all the like, how much money did you spend on this? Too much. Okay, moving on. It's Alez1435 asked, what's your favorite sport to watch? I really like Monster Jam, dirt bikes, BMX, uh, and MMA. That's really it. I can appreciate baseball, but it's not fun to watch. I used to play baseball and it's fun to play, but man, unless you're there, like actually watching the game, it's a snooze fest. Dillman <laughs> asked, as somebody who also has multiple hobbies that they're passionate about, do you stay equally as interested interested in all of them or do you put more time into one versus the others? I used to rotate all three of them. I haven't ridden since December. <laughs> That's another one of the most common questions I got asked is uh, why did I stop riding? I had just ridden almost every single day for like 10 years and I just got a little burnt out on it and I just needed a little break. The BMX content is going to return at some point because I can already feel like the itch coming back a little bit. Right now I'm pretty locked in on guitar playing, I'm not going to lie, but I do flip pretty regularly regularly also still. When I started making content on all three of them as consistently as I could, uh, I would rotate them pretty evenly. Like if you look at my shorts, it's like I upload a BMX short, a guitar short, and then a ballast song short, and I just repeat that. Cole Cavisto 2954 asked, ballast songs, guitars, or BMX? Right now, I would take guitar over the other two. But like if you asked me this when I just got back from Blade Show, I would have said ballast songs. If you asked me back in like 2020, I would have said BMX. That question is very dependent on like when you ask that question. Moving on, Drop in Ninja 4 asked, what is a BMX brand that you personally stay away from? This is gonna be a hot take. <laughs> I have never really fucked with s and or Fit. I don't know if it's just because a lot of s and and Fit stuff was sold here where I live, but uh, even in videos, I'm not saying that they're the worst or that they objectively break the most often. I'm saying in my experience, the brand of parts that I've witnessed break the most often has been s and and Fit. So Commander Gamma asked, have you ever considered designing your own ballast song? I think a few other people have asked me this question too. And yeah, I have, but I have no fucking idea what it would be. <laughs> I've never really had this like exact design that I've always wanted to bring to life. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> like I'd be down to make a signature ballast song one day, but I'd need some help designing it. <laughs> Cyberpunk the Wolf 5567 asked, what is my favorite genre of music? Well, that's easy. It's just metal. <laughs> Anything with guitar 
I'm gonna fuck with. Dude, I could sit here for like an hour listing off the music that I like, but I'd say my favorite genre is probably just some heavy metal, any kind. Like, I don't give a fuck about subgenre. Dexy Storm asked, what was the highest number of rice corns that you ate in one day? What's a rice corn? ZWTHT8723 asked, what's the first riff you ever learned? Properly, I would say uh, Jars by Chevelle. That was probably the one riff that I learned that actually sounded like the riff that I was trying to learn. Oh, he's, this guy has a lot of likes. So Bass Clef 1686 asked, how do you manage time with your hobbies? I already kind of answered that one. Have you ever grown too quickly in a hobby and burned out? I wouldn't say I grew too quickly. I actually struggle quite a lot with all three of my hobbies. None of them came very natural to me at all, but I have burnt out on a hobby and usually what happens is I just go on to another one. Any aspirations to gig as a guitarist? I would love to play live guitar consistently. Like I'd love to be one of those guys that just like fills in for the guitar player that retired in a legacy band. I think that would be so much fun, but I would also just love to play like my own music live or just gig as a guitar player. Hi, I'm Dominic asked, did you learn any theory? I took a music theory course in high school and I don't remember anything from it. <laughs> I do like little bits and pieces of research on theory. And then he also asked, is theory important? And if yes, where should I start? I guess just with any sort of like music theory course on YouTube, I would say, I don't think theory is necessary, but it can only help. Like there's those people that's like, oh, don't learn too much theory. It's gonna turn you into a stale guitar player. That's not really true. Theory only really helps you. Blaze Empress 485 asked, what features do you think are key when designing a ballad song? And which do you think is done wrong by most makers. I don't think there's like one thing that's like key for designing a ballad song. I think all of it is important, but one thing I think is done wrong by most makers is jimping. I feel like a lot of makers don't make it deep or aggressive enough for it to like really work as it should. Elijah Santos 3525 asked, what's your best piece of advice in life? You know, like something that's stuck with you all your life. Fuck. I think it's important to not take life too seriously because I feel like a lot of stuff can stress people out that in the long run really doesn't matter that much. I think it's important to remember like you got to unclench your ass and like actually try and enjoy life despite how unbearably shitty it can be sometimes. And I know that's easier said than done, but just, I don't know why we're here, but we got to make the best of it, you know? Nona Meeksist Statal asked. I was wondering how long you've been in the Balasong community in order to get to your level. What do you mean by that? <laughs> like my level in flipping? Uh, not that long. I'd say like out of the three hobbies that I focus on, Balasongs are the easiest one. Like that has the easiest learning curve. Like that's the one that you can like get a grasp of the quickest, I would say. When you say my level in the Balasong community, are you talking about like my popularity? I, I don't know. <laughs> like I was never very active in the community until I started making Balasong videos. The first first Balasong videos I ever made, I was calling out a bunch of assholes. And I don't know, people seemed to really jive with that at the time. And I, I don't know, man, just be yourself. NY Rusera asked, if you could have dinner with two famous people, alive or dead, who would they be? Shit. <laughs> like the two that are coming to my head are Eddie Van Halen and BB King. I would love to just sit and talk for hours with both of those guys and just learn. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., he's kind of the person that inspired me to come out of my shell a little bit when I was younger. This would be really cool to talk to him. Free Soup 9673 asked, what's your overall opinions on other types of riding hobbies like skateboards or scootering? I think they're fucking sick. I know everyone likes to make fun of scooter riders, but some of those guys can do some batshit crazy stuff. I'll always admire skateboarding just because I could never, it didn't click with my brain. I can ride in a straight line on a skateboard and that's about the extent of my abilities on one. <laughs> it's not like the sport that is the issue. It's how some people act within their respective sport and the superiority complex they can have because of it. And that's what causes like all the fights and all the goofiness and all the stupidity. Like Steve Caballero trying to start arguments over, oh, BMXers can't call half cabs half cabs. Why the fuck not? That's the dumbest non-argument you could start. Get over yourself. Connor H6779 asked, how long does it take you before you become comfortable and good at performing a given trick? Uh, I think that all depends on just how much you practice. 
practice it. There's not like a set time, you know, it's it's how much practice you put into it. Like that's the key for guitar, ballad songs, and BMX. It's just practice. And the more you practice, the faster you learn. Jesse Hauser 4215 said, how long have you been flipping for? I started flipping in 2010, so 13, 14 years, but I've been doing freestyle BMX like 10, 11 years. And then I've played guitar since seventh grade. That, so it's been like 17 years that I've been playing guitar. Lob Prob Bob asked, how has your day been? My day's been good. Yesterday I found out that I have an enlarged spleen, so I gotta figure out what that, what, what all that's about, but uh, I'm doing good. Let's see here, where the fuck? Okay, here it is, Mao Lao. <laughs> they asked, do you have any comedic inspirations or people slash groups in that field that stand out to you? Also, he said, change my mind, I will not be entering the giveaway. Uh, yes, you are. If you left a comment, you're entered. Uh, comedic inspirations. Most other comedians, it's like, they're either just not funny, they're cringe, or they just punch down and then get mad when people people don't find that funny anymore. It's like, okay, stop being so lazy with your jokes. Like put some actual effort. I really like Smiling Friends. I think Smiling Friends is hilarious. Uh, Rick and Morty is hilarious. I don't know. I get comedic inspirations from just like anything. Like in Ozark when Ruth says, I don't know shit about fuck. Uh, me and my roommate, we just watch all kinds of shit and then we just quote it back to each other. My roommate's hilarious. She's a comedic inspiration for me. Um, I know there's other people. I'm just forgetting like who they are. Uh, Sniper Boof <laughs> of 1YJ asked, Did did you ever win a giveaway for anything? I have not met a single person who has. I have won a giveaway. Modern Balasong was giving away an EX-10 and uh, I won that bitch. Unfortunately, I had to sell that Balasong almost immediately after getting it because uh, my little puppy, he needed to go to the vet and we needed to pay some vet, vet bills. I used that money and then like three months later, that piece of shit, Sam, that I sold the EX-10 to, he somehow got his bank to label our transaction as fraud and then they just just ripped a thousand dollars out of my bank account. So Sam James with an X on Instagram, still waiting for that thousand dollars, buddy. Trasher spelled with a six asked, have you ever heard about pen spinning? Yes. And then they also asked English or Spanish? Well, uh, I can't speak Spanish, so I guess English. I was raised half the time by an angry uh, Hispanic woman. That was my grandma. <laughs> she talked to me a lot in Spanish, so I can understand a lot of Spanish, but I'm not very confident in like speaking it other than when I just like say cuss words in Spanish. Sebastian Pelez 6436 asked, what's the most challenging trick you've mastered on your BMX bike and how long did it take you to perfect it? The foot jam windshield wiper probably took the longest for me to land because I would just sit there for like hours and hours and hours and hours trying it. And then I would finally land it. And it's kind of the same thing every time I try it. I think there's only been like one time where I landed it and it didn't take me that long. And I wouldn't even really say I mastered it. It's just like, I can land it if I'm persistent enough. But that's most of the BMX BMX tricks that I would do. I, I usually have to sit there for quite a long time until I can get it. Then he also asked, what attracted you to battle song flipping and how do you stay safe while practicing new moves? Kick ass and like just battle songs in media attracted me to it. How do you stay safe while practicing new moves? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I was a live blade only person for like the first 10 years. Trainers are always a safe bet. Um, if you have a live blade and you're really scared of getting cut, just put masking tape over the blade. You should be safe. Um, but the thing that gets me most about live blades is the tip. The tip is what I'm always the most scared of. So when I get a battle song with a live blade and a crazy tip that I know that I'm gonna keep, I just take it and I just go, oops. And then I drop it on my carpet and suddenly the tip's gone. All right, fellers, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. I would love to answer everyone's question, but I've already been sitting here for 94 minutes. So why don't we figure out who the winner of this giveaway is gonna be, eh? Let's figure out who's gonna win this gaggle ass of battle songs here. But yeah, I'm on this random YouTube comment picker and I'm just gonna enter this URL and see who wins. And if you left a comment in this video, you're entered to win. I don't give a shit if you were like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not actually entering. I'm just leaving a comment. All right, critters, I am going to paste this URL into here. I am going to fetch these comments. I am not going to include replies or duplicates. Anything else goes, let's continue. We have loaded 188 comments. Let's pick a winner, shall we? Yippee40 said, I live in the US. Congrats, homie. No, 
Congrats to you, homie. You just won 12 Bala songs. Uh, what was the rest of your comment? Great job on being booze free. Thank you. What's your favorite knife that isn't a Bala song that you own? I don't have a, uh, I guess the, how do you say it? Jag Commando? The one that's like a war crime, I think that's a pretty cool looking knife. I don't know, outside of Bala songs, I'm really not that much of a knife guy. But Yippy 40, you just won a bunch of Bala songs. So Mr. Yippy, what you are going to do is you are going to DM me on Instagram. You may find, you may end up in my requests, but I will find you. And then after that, I will get your address and I will send these things your way. Everybody give a big congratulations to Yippy 40 Thank you guys for asking all your questions and for entering this giveaway. And thank you guys for all the support since 2016. And uh, the sooner we get to 30K, the sooner we get to do another one of these giveaways. But thank you guys for all the support and for 20,000 subs. I... We'll see you guys next time. I'll turn the light off when they come back in. Okay, make sure they come back. They usually do. Yeah, the coyote out there. I'll fucking kill that bitch.